you. What a night. Goodness. Thank you all. Twenty twenty. Goodness, how many of us remember preparing for Y2K? And I know it's really not the end of the decade, but I, come on, we do it by tens. I'm not going to wait till January 1st, 2020, 31st, 2021. You know, this is my decade. So, 20 later, years later, we're still here. We've accomplished a lot. Let's take a look at some of the most important things that's happened in the last 10 years. We opened the Summit Activity Adult Center 10 years ago. 10 years! Crazy! It was the first such facility built for baby boomers in the nation. It's still, I didn't know this, it's still the only freestanding mega center for age 50 plus. The other ones have it attached to something with wings and stuff. <laughs> it's the only one and we get, give tours monthly from other cities, for other cities. In fact, the New York Times recently cited the summit as setting the bar for baby boomer facilities in the nation. At the same time, we opened the public safety building, giving our police and fire world-class facility as their headquarters. Thanks to you, our voters, who approve these projects being built with the sales tax. See, we're not in DART, so we have a penny that can go to things that you approve. And so we've been able to build things like that. In the past 10 years, we've had a 47% decrease in crime. About 4,000, yes. <laughs> about 4,000 fewer crimes since 2010, even though the population has grown by 25,000. And we are consistently in the top 10 safest large city in Texas. Now, the staff knows this. They never give me a number without quantifying it. The first time somebody told me you were in the top 10, I said, yeah, 10 out of 12, big deal. Well, it's 10 out of 34, which is a big deal. We have a new police chief as we move into 2020. Steve Dye retired in January to become our full-time deputy city manager, and assistant chief Daniel Sesney was promoted to chief. Please stand, Daniel. And I, I, I'll pause here for a minute. When, when we promoted him, I told him this. I said, Daniel, I followed a very, very, very good mayor, Mayor England. He set the bar so high, but I'm not trying to be a Mayor England. I could not be Mayor England. I, will, I had to be my own mayor. Same for you. You're replacing somebody that set the bar real high. But we don't expect you to be Steve Dine. But the point is, you're Daniel. You'll do a great job, and we'll never second guess and say, well, that's not the way D.C. would have done it. You just go lead this city. In the past decade, we started a facade program revitalizing the heart of Grand Prix because the citizens said they wanted to fix downtown. We're still working on it. What a difference it's made. We have invested $2 million in the Main Street Facade Improvement Program and $30 million in the city facilities like the Uptown, Farmer's Market, Fire Station 1, Firehouse Gastro Park, and now the new City Hall. Last 10 years, we opened State Highway 161, the George Bush Turnpike, and the Outlet Mall to the new retail and restaurant development we're now enjoying. During the past 10 years, Mayor England retired, and I was blessed to be elected as your mayor six and a half years ago, and have served as city council member for 11 years. And I can tell you, it really has been a blast. Rebecca and I have such a good time in the community with you at all the various events. I will, you know, you ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. Not all of them we enjoy, some of the others, but we go to a lot of them. <laughs> The city opened the new fire station number one on Main Street, creating a beautiful book into Main Street and opening up our historic fire station one that was built in 1950 and it became the popular firehouse gastro park just uh, uh, last year. Here's some big things we did. In the past decade, voters approved a quarter cent sales tax to build Epic Waters Indoor Water Park, the Epic and Playground Adventures. If you were here at my first State of the City in 2014, that's when we rolled it out. I remember getting here early that night and they had brochures on the table. Remember that, Amy? 
You had brochures on the table announcing the quarter cent sales tax for the Epic, and I said, get, no, get them off the tables. I didn't want anybody to know about it until I said it in my speech. That's when we presented the plan to you at my first day to the city in 2014. You overwhelmingly approved it in May of that year. So Epic Waters Indoor Water Park has had 700,000 visitors. Been open two years. 3,200 parties a year in several awards, including a top 10 water park in the USA by USA Today. Then later, a little bit later, we opened the Epic Arts Fitness and Recreational Center, which is changing the concept of public recreation across the nation. We have 11,000 members, 280,000 scans, 500 parties, and almost a half a million visits with members, tours, programs, and events. And then just this year, even though I wasn't in the last 10 years, I'm, I'm counting it because we were building it, we opened Playground Adventures. How many of you have taken your kids to Playground Adventures? I mean, my goodness, it is great. It's an accessible playground with two acres of play, three acres of parking, pavilions, paving, and plaza. When all of the 10-acre park is built, it will be one of the largest of its kind in the nation. It's been so popular, we're having to have people park at Epic Waters and tram them over to the playground, and we're fixing to build 96 more parking spots this summer. Yes. Okay, what I'm fixing to say is not that fancy, but folks, it's big to our city. Another big will change the city forever is the projects that we're wor working on with TxDOT on frontage roads. We, y'all know if any of you have been here as long as I have, why we don't have frontage roads on I-30, because it used to be what? The turnpike. How many of us called it the turnpike for 20 years after it wasn't a turnpike? Well, you take the turnpike. Well, where's the turnpike? Oh, I'm sorry, it's I-30. <laughs> well, we're finally getting I frontage roads on I-30. It's the chance to give us some developable acreage along I-30 for the first time ever. We had Omni plan to plan for us to show us what could be accomplished there. We're already talk, talking to developers. Stay tuned. I-20, we're already built, it, building frontage roads. Some of it's already open, and within a few years, it once it's all open, 350 acres of developable land will be available. I know construction can be tedious, especially I'm sorry, Rob, you can't get to your restaurant off I-20 to get breakfast, but uh, it'll be done within 10 years. <laughs> I'm glad you opened the other one so you can, you can make a living while this one... No, no actually, it's going to be finished in two more years, which is still within 10 years, but it sounds better to say it'll be done in two years. About five years ago, we began the Live Life Grand advertising campaign. Why did we do that? I was invited to speak at my alma mater, UTA, about what we did to create this boom. Of course, let's, let's be blunt, it would not have happened without the George Bush Turnpike opening up in 2012, 2013. It opened up and gave us access to thousands of acres of developable land when no city around in the Metroplex has that much land available with such good in intersections close to it. So that started it. But also, we needed to change the minds of how people perceived Grand Prairie, including those of us that live here. Come on, folks. Those of you who grew up here, we know what we were called. I know what the people said when we announced what Ikea was coming. Grand Prairie. <laughs> and it wasn't a compliment. <laughs> so we had to get out of the box and promote ourselves. So we did. We started a great Live Life Grand campaign to communicate how great we are through regional ad campaign. Typically cities don't advertise, but we felt like we needed to, and we think it's been highly successful. Some more productive transportation has been the extension of 360 down to 287. Boy, that was a windy day, can you tell? 
Yeah. Even, even Mayor, former Mayor Barr has some wind blowing in his, and he's almost bald. But that was a great day when we got to open up 360. Again, it opens up 800 acres of developable land down on our side of 360. During the past decade, we opened Fire Station 10 on the peninsula, covering all our southernmost part of the city. I told you all this last year, but it's worth repeating. Our fire department main went from an ISO 3 to a 1. We're surrounded by twos. Look at that. Most of the cities around us, I, I know for a fact Arlington can never get a 1. It's because they don't have their own in-house ambulance service. Correct, Chief? They can't get the numbers there. Did you already go watch the, have you sitting here left to go watch the Stars game? No, there you are. <laughs> but isn't that right? They can't get a one. They just don't have them, they, they can't because, unless they brought the ambulance service in house. So we're surrounded by twos. That's huge, not only for safety, because you had to meet certain criteria to get that, but for your insurance also. Something I get asked a lot is, when are we going to get a hospital? And I tell them it was, if it was like the last hospital we had, I hope never. <laughs> it was ranked the highest priced hospital in the state of Texas a couple of years running, so be careful what you ask for, folks. But I don't really think we're going to get one any time in the future, and here's why. We are served by really great hospitals. See, we're so long and skinny. We're served by lots of great hospitals. If you were to have a heart attack in North Grand Prairie, even if we had the hospital open there off Great Southwest, they would take you to the closest one, which may be Irving on MacArthur, or the Arlington Memorial on Randall Mill. And to prove that point, our fire department and EMS service has been awarded the American Heart Association gold medal for five years running. Well, what does that mean? That means when Tom Hart had his heart attack in the office, which he did, and Chief Fike ran a 12 lead on him, or a lieutenant did, and told him, you're having issues, and he said, well, I'll call Susan to come get me. <laughs> he really did say that. Chief, they're looking at the 12 lead printout and says, yeah, you got issues. And he said, well, I'll call Susan to come get me. <laughs> Chief Fike said, oh, no, no, we're taking you. But that ate up 10 minutes of the 90 minutes we got. So the point is, when you have a heart attack, by the time our paramedic breaches the door to the time they get you in the hospital, in the cath lab with a cath in you, you have to do that in less than 90 minutes, 90% 90 of the time. Many years we've done it 100% of the time, haven't we, Chief? Every year, Every year we've done 100% of the time. Every year. So, <laughs> I, told, I told the story that had he argued a little bit more time, Chief Fight would have left and started the clock back over and come back in. <laughs> They did get him there in time. They got him in there with 83 minutes, seven minutes to spare. We're only four other fire departments in the Metroplex have this designation, folks. Only four in the Metroplex. And they each have a hospital in the center of their town. Thank you all back there in the back left-hand corner. Our fire... Back to major accomplishments. We won the gold medal for best parks in the nation for the second time. You know, there's only four other cities in the state of Texas that have won it twice. Austin, Denton, Plano, three other cities. We won it twice, gold medal twice. We landed IKEA in spaces, which are two big regional shopping destinations that add to our other regional shopping experiences. The Grand Prairie Premium Outlet Mall, plus 161 has created the opening for more than 50 new restaurants and retail stores on the State Highway 161 with two more retail centers under construction. All right, I want y'all to meet my good friend that has helped do, do with all this development. John Weber, would you please stand? Thank you, John. John is the one de developing Epic East, Epic West, and has been 
major part of partnering with the city to try to bring us things we don't have. When I say things we don't have, and I told this story, but it's worth telling. I got excited when we, I was told we got a Smoothie King. <laughs> Why was I excited when I was told we got a Smoothie King? Because we didn't have one. I was having to drive to Matlock to get a Smoothie King. <laughs> Folks, I was tired of driving to Arlington to do everything I did. Now, do I still drive over there and go out to eat every once? Well, of course I will. I'll go to Dallas, I'll go to Grapevine, but folks, we are now having choices that we've never had before. We've got two Smoothie Kings. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so where do we go from here? Let's take a look. We just celebrated the opening of Fire Station 4, serving North Grand Prairie. A new Fire Station 3 will be built in 2020. We've moved into our new City Hall Central, which links the, together the existing City Hall which is now City Hall West, and the Development Center, which is City Hall East. We're a growing city and needed more space, but instead of growing out, going out and building a new building, we got out of the box and built in the middle of the street, connecting the two cities, the two existing buildings. Another big project, the city, Dallas County, and the RTC were funded Camp Wisdom, finally Camp Wisdom is going to be open. Well, the two lanes are bad two lanes. It's going to be four nice lanes. It's going to, thank you. How many, you know, as backed up as I-20 get, you're going to want to go Camp Wisdom sometime. It'll be completed in 2022. TxDOT and NTTA are adding an additional lane both ways. On 161 from I-30 to 183 is to be completed in 2022. You've seen the construction right now. That increases the capacity on the George Bush Turnpike by 50%. Not only that, TxDOT's adding a lane northbound and southbound on 360. So basically, we're getting two lanes added headed northbound and two lanes added headed southbound because many of us use George Bush sometimes. Many of us use 360. And not only that, Further to our east, TxDOT, along with some regional partners, are expanding 67. If you want to go I-20 to 67 to get into Dallas, it's adding lanes. So we're going to add some lanes. The next thing we have to do is try to figure out how to get people east and west on I-20. <laughs> However, getting them off of I-20 faster onto 360 in the George Bush does help. The backups create problems. The new, wider Great Southwest Parkway just opened. Jeff Copeland's very happy. So is Traders Village. One of my most important priorities as mayor has been to expand choices for Grand Prairie. All of these infrastructure improvements allowed us to attract big boxes and big brands like IKEA, Living Spaces, Walmart, which in turn has stimulated all the other development we are see seeing. Let's look at new construction around town. I've got to tell you, there was a council meeting earlier this year. Rebecca comes to every one of the council meetings. Hasn't missed a council meeting that I've been there. In fact, she's come to one where I wasn't there. I mean, she's just part of the team. Loves having dinner with us. But she, she comes to every council meeting. She says it's more fun than watching TV. Uh, wonder why. So, uh, have you checked what's on Tuesday nights lately? <laughs> so there was a meeting we had, and we approved four things that night. And the next day when I got home, I, she told me, baby, I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited about the four things we approved that night. Here they are. One, the former, now see, Amy didn't even know it was a former Gibson's department store. It's the former town and country furniture store where you got two bikes with a, with a, a new mattress every time you bought one. <laughs> and it's also the former Gibson department store. Rodney Devon bought it and he's turning it into the Gibson. It is going to happen because it's already under construction. There's a picture of it. <laughs> Thank you, Rodney. It's going to have 100 unit apartments, 12,000 square feet of retail and restaurant space. Next, number two, the Calterra development. Now, I want to qualify this. Just because we approved it doesn't mean it will happen. 
It's been approved. The developers say they're, it's going to happen, but this is what we approved that night, the Calterra development on the northwest corner of Forum and 161. It's a mixed-use project which includes 102 single-family townhomes with gated entry, 325 multifamily units in four buildings, retail, office, and two hotels on the frontage road. Now, we're at the council meeting, and we're running through these pictures, and we go past it, and I say, wait, David, back up. I want that picture at the top. I looked at the developer and said, developer, I'm keeping that picture. What you build better look like that. I'm going to count the damn bulbs. It better look like that. And he said, yes, sir, it will. The Alamo Draft House. Folks, did you ever think we'd get an Alamo Draft House? Hamilton Peck, stand up, please. Hamilton, he's the developer for the Alamo Draft House. Thank you. I get updates from him in the hallway at the Mavericks game. So, you know, <laughs> I've been after him. When have you signed the, the deal on, on the Alamo Draft House? He's going down the hallway at the uh, Maverick game, and he knew who I was from behind. Go figure why. <laughs> and so he comes up to his mayor. I just signed the lease, so we're giving high fives in the <laughs> hallway there at the Maverick Center. But look at this. Did y'all see the video? There's not another Alamo Draft House south of south of, goodness, south of anywhere. You got to go to Irving. You got to go to Dallas. You got to go to North Richland Hills. We're going to get an Alamo draft house. Number, where, where? Well, we haven't decided yet. We're spinning the wheel. No, you know where Georgia's church is and the Concord Concord, Southeast 360. yeah, Southeast 360 in Barden, but right next to the Concord, that big old space there. Y'all know where it is now? Big piece, piece of land. Bible study on Sunday. Yeah, Bible study on Sunday night, Alamo Draft House for Beers, Monday night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're going to start going to church there, aren't you? <laughs> I want in that Sunday school class. <laughs> so, it, it, but that's simple. I mean, that's neat. Condos, retail, it's going to be fantastic. Now, number four, I can show you a fuzzy picture of it because the developer has asked me not to reveal it at this time. But it's a, it's a big deal on North 360. Would include a major... Conference center, big conference center, multifamily retail, restaurants, and a hotel. So stay tuned. We hope that will come to fruition. In fact, we're working on several big deals that could happen and would be big. And while I hate to say I can't tell you, the fact is we're either not far enough along in the development to finalize the plans to be announced or the developers ask us not to announce it. And here's, here's an example. We, met, we knew about Ikea for eight months before we could announce it because Ikea said we don't want to announce it. Last year at my State of the City, you may remember, I was up until a week before the State of the City, I was not going to be able to announce the main event until John Weber called me a week before and says, Mayor, they've given me the thumbs up to have you announce it. So there are things we're working on that we cannot announce. But I will tell you, I've come up with a little game I'm going to play this year. <laughs> I have a list of four projects that I've listed as A, B, C, and D. And I can't, cannot give you the nicknames that we've come up with them because that would give away what they are. But Tom and I have handicapped them. <laughs> and to whether or not, you know, how likely they are to happen. So, A, someday I may say, A made it. And here's what it is. We're giving it a 90% chance of making it. B is another project. We're giving it an 80% chance of making it. C is another project a huge project, we're giving it a 50-50 chance. 
And then finally, D is a huger project, but we're only given it a 10% chance of making it. <laughs> Before the last council meeting, we had it handicapped at a 20, 2080. After, the, after we were getting back with them on some negotiating deals, we dropped it. Overnight, dropped the line 10 points to 10% chance. But if I announce on Facebook in a couple of months, folks, A has, I can announce A and here it is. You'll know what I'm talking about. A, B, C, and D. Let's head down south. Peninsula Point. This is a, may be confusing to you, but it's down by Station 10. It's the best looking fire, it's the best looking gas station anywhere. You need to drive down the peninsula, down Lake Ridge sometime, all the way down and see this development. It, peninsula Point on the northeast corner of Lake Ridge and England Parkway is open. The 4,000 square foot gas and convenience store has a 4,000 square foot retail component for three tenants. Right across, right behind the gas station is Rebecca's eyes favorite, the mansions. Grand Prairie Luxury Apartments. Aren't those beautiful? If you're on the back side of that one corner, out on the balcony, you'll be able to see the lake from there. And that's not a rendering, that's it. It's built right now. They're pre-leasing it. It includes 5,500 square feet of retail in front and restaurants on the ground floor. Right across the street, if you drive out there, they've already broken ground. The pictures on the left, or upper left-hand corner is a rendering, but the pipes and the John Deere, Olivia would love to have one of those tractors, wouldn't she, Nicole? Uh, it's, there, it's right across the street. It's the Merrill Lagos townhomes. These are 125 high-end townhomes, age restricted to 55 plus, gated and started over $275,000. They're gonna open later this year. Just south of that, yes, south, Marilogos townhomes south, which are not age restricted. They'll have 87 units opening in early 2021. Then you go north of the mansions on the west side of the lake, the city council just approved Lake Ridge Commons, folks. We just approved it. 91 acres, 98 single family homes and $400,000 range with 100 townhomes from 275,000 to 325,000 the townhomes are. And apartments above retail will be added later. The first floor will be retail. Then you head over on 1382 to the Retreat Senior Apartments on Beltline and Warrior Trail. We announced that the other day, somebody did on Facebook and somebody, po I love, I love some comments on Facebook. <laughs> oh, by the way, we are streaming this live on Facebook. Hi, everybody at home. <laughs> but Rodney, somebody said, who had the, the, the funny idea of having a retirement center right across from the cemetery? <laughs> I thought that the vacant land, you know. <laughs> Sense of humor. It'll fill up quick. <laughs> Hi, Chelsea. Okay, let's go uptown on Long 161. Y'all seen those, the Sutherland Apartments. One of my favorite apartment builders, Tim McCaskill is building that. It's under construction with opening late 2020. It's at the corner of Robinson and Forum. Then just Epic West expects to open Blaze with first fast-fired custom-built artisan pizzas, Twin Peaks, and a Longhorn Steakhouse. Folks, they've already been approved. They bought land, they're coming. The Walmart Center also will have a mod pizza. So we're getting, you know, we're getting two of those artisan pizza places. <laughs> I mean, you go through and you tell them, it's kind of like going through Chipotle, but with pizza. <laughs> it's the same concept, salada, but with pizza. But they're delicious. They're great. It's gonna be between Chipotle and Wendy's. They're on the same property with Walmart. 
Contractors are beginning to build Epic East Retail and Restaurant Center north of Ikea. We knew Coles was going to leave Grand Prairie. As a matter of fact, we met John Ware by myself, Tom and Chief Dye met in Chief Dye's office years ago, and we were showing them the land, and I'll never forget this meeting, John, it was an easy answer. Coles asked for $5 million to keep him in Grand Prairie, and I said, boy, that's an easy answer. The answer is no. <laughs> but we are keeping him in Grand Prairie. They're moving into the Epic West, and probably a fitness center will go into the old building. That's supposed to be a joke, because it seems like fitness centers are going everywhere. I mean, it's, it, Albertsons has closed two months, and a fitness center's going in there, so uh, maybe another fitness. I don't want a fitness center. I want a Hobby Lobby. Well, I don't want a Hobby Lobby. I want a Hobby Lobby for her. <laughs> so I guess I do want a Hobby Lobby. Well, yeah. All right, on 303, Mission Tortilla is finishing out their 900,000 square feet of space and will add close to 100 jobs to their existing 300 in the next two years. We also landed another Tier 1 General Motors supplier. Lyric Corporation seating plant moved to our side of Great Southwest Industrial Park, bringing 782 jobs. The first one was Flexingate. They moved from our neighbors in the west because they wanted to own the building. And so we have two tier one suppliers to General Motors in our city now, which is big jobs. Restaurants that want to build ask what the daytime traffic is for lunches. Here's another employer that gives us good daytime. Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control grew its employee base by 1,000 people up to 3,500 in 2019. And then the new larger Texas Roadhouse restaurant, it, it didn't look that much bigger, but if you get over there in front of it, behind it, it is. It's 1,000 square feet bigger. It has opened. It has more parking. But I understand Mike Madrano's already started talking to Taco Bueno to see if they can move next to him so he can use their parking because they're running out of parking. <laughs> Stay tuned to see if he gets Taco Bueno to move. I'm just kidding, folks. <laughs> a Specs Liquor Store is building at Raglan and State Highway 360, and it's going to open in 2020. We also have redevelopment efforts in place. Folks, we're not just focusing on new things. We're trying to, we're an old city. We're an old city. We're a first ring city. I didn't know what a first ring city meant. First time Chief Fight told me that. We're a first ring city. That's the first suburbs that built outside of the major cities. So we're, we're one of the older first ring city suburbs that built outside of Dallas. We have streets older than some cities. So we've started a community revitalization division within our city that will concentrate on downtown enhancements, community engagement, neighborhood vital, revitalization, and beautification. Part of that is our building blocks program, which offers rebates for residents to improve the exterior of their homes, including landscaping and fencing to enhance neighborhoods, Id identities, property value, and beautification. The city rebates up to 25% or $5,000 of the cost of a qualifying project. You have a $20,000 project, and if it qualifies, we'll give you $5,000 back. Grand Prairie is all about fun, so let's take a quick look at what's gotten added to our wonderful, Amy's so cute with her words. <laughs> Amy, thank you. Allie, thank you. How many hours do you think we've spent on this sucker? A lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, I like what she sent me today after the last, we made some changes this this morning. So she sends me an email for me to download and read it, and she said, this is the final until it's not. <laughs> Thank you, Amy and Allie. So our newest entertainment draw, main event. How many of you been to main event? My goodness. It is fun. I bet they're wondering why they didn't come sooner. Have you seen the parking lot? Every day. It features bowling, food, arcade, laser, laser tag, gravity ropes, billiard, and virtual reality games. 
Main event estimates they will host about 2,000 parties a year. Combine that with the 3,200 parties at Epic Waters and the 500 at the Epic, we're birthday party central, folks. <laughs> now, here's a big deal we've been working on since we passed the quarter cent sales tax. This isn't part of the quarter cent sales tax, but it was a dream that we're fulfilling that would go along with Epic, Epic Waters, in our Epic Central Park. We have partnered with Concord Hospitality out of Raleigh, North Carolina to build two hotels, a conference center, restaurant row that will break ground sometime this year. Concord is one of the top hotel management companies in the nation and is bringing us a Hilton Garden Inn and Homewood Suites offering above about 270 units combined with a 13,000 square foot conference center. That's right at Epic Central. Also under design is a 30,000 square feet of restaurant shelf space in Epic Central near the hotels. We're working with the restaurant developers to bring several unique dining concepts from high end to affordable. What would you think if I told you we have something in common with Deep Ellum and Addison? You say, well, okay, well, maybe. Tattoo parlors, no. Um, <laughs> which we're gonna get some. We're bringing some restaurants that are in Deep Ellum and Addison. I'm pleased to announce tonight that we have entered into an agreement with Milkshake Concepts. Imran is the owner of Milkshake Concepts, and if you've ever been to the upscale Vidora in Deep Ellum, or Stir, they're bringing them to Grand Prairie, folks. In addition to that, we approved a lease with our partners operating Loop 9 Barbecue, which will be in that restaurant row right there along the lake and expect to open it in fall of 2021. Now to give that some credibility, so you'll know we're talking to some good people, Larry Levine, the founder of Chili's, is the one that's heading up that group. He couldn't be with us tonight, but Larry Levine with, from Chili's. The city has also reached an agreement with Boulder Adventure Park to create a 66,000 square foot air supported dome that would contain rock climbing, zip lines, tube sliding, bumper cars, and a ropes course. Yes, synthetic ice skating, youth net playgrounds, net adventure course, climbing walls, free fall jumps, and arcade. And the developer for that is here with us tonight, Paul Fontanelli, please stand. It's gonna be located be between the Playground Adventures and the Animal sh Shelter. It will be a great addition to our Epic Central. Now, again, we're hoping it, I didn't give you odds on this one, Paul, because <laughs> I announced it, you go get some money. <laughs> Folks, it's always about the money. Developers, I've learned that if, if you raise enough equity, there's banks that'll loan you almost any amount of money. It's raising that at-risk equity, and that's what he's doing now. He comes from a financial background. I think he's gonna get there. We want you to get there. Thanks for coming tonight. Parks is working on two great additions to our trail system. The first one is a project dear to my heart because after I was elected mayor, Miss Ruthie Jackson set to my immediate left and Georgia was elected soon after, so both Georgia and Ruthie were on the council with me for about three months. And in a meeting, at a briefing, we were getting briefed on the trail system between Dallas and Fort Worth, and Ruthie looked at me and said, Mayor, this is my last term, tag, you're it. You've gotta get this completed. I'll never forget that, you were there, it's gonna get done. The f <laughs> Grand Prairie's Lone Star Trinity Trail is a 52 mile paved pedestrian tail that will, trail that will eventually collect, connect downtown Dallas to downtown Fort Worth, roughly following the Trinity River. And those are the mayors that participated in the signing of it. Our portion already connects to Campion Trail in Irving, and we have plans to connect to River Legacy Trail in Arlington. Our extension from Beltline to Wildlife Park is underway and should be open early summer. 
my bike ride that I do once a month starting in April, we do one of those. We don't do the 52 miles, folks. <laughs> Some of you could, I can't. Building this trail system has been underway since 2013. The last segments of the trail will be completed in 2023, and we will certainly recognize Ruthie when we open it, Georgia. We are adding another quarter mile to a two and a half mile long Fish Creek linear trail that connects with Arlington's six mile section. That's down by Rebecca's Mine House and Tom Hart's house. It's a cul-de-sac at the end of Matthew Road. You can come to our cul-de-sac and ride a bike or walk all the way over to Madlock at the park over there without well, I don't think you. I don't think you have to go across. I think you have to go across the street one place over in Arlington. But folks, you'll be able to get on it, go all the way over there, come back. It's nine miles one way. Who was telling me they could run a marathon if they go there and back? So, of course, I don't know how long a marathon is. <laughs> Although it's funny, I did dream. I've been dreaming a lot this week. Rebecca said it's because I worry about this. I dreamed I ran a marathon the other night. <laughs> and I wasn't even tired. I said, what's the big deal? <laughs> oh, wait. I, read my, I ride my Peloton for 20 minutes, can't even hardly walk to the chair. But I, that night I ran a marathon and wasn't even tired. <laughs> in fact, you could use these trails and all the other fitness opportunities in town to join my 2020 Mayor's Get Fit Challenge. I've challenged everybody to sign up and do at least 20 minutes of exercise three times a week. Folks, just three times a week. I've done it since the last week in December. Rebecca and I go walk at the Epic on nights I don't have anything to do, and I ride a Peloton on the other days. And so we completed our, I've already completed my three for this week. And I thought about, well, I'll do a fourth one tomorrow, and I said, no, I'm doing this tonight. I ain't doing nothing tomorrow. <laughs> you can find more out about it. Be, gptx.org slash getfitgp. The other thing, I, I got the idea for cycling with the mayor from Mayor Price in Fort Worth. I got another brilliant idea from her. She turned 70 last year. I turned 70 this year. I know you're saying, no, no way he's 70. <laughs> I do, I turned 70 in December. So I'm gonna do something similar to what Mayor Price did. We're going to do 70 for 70, a program to celebrate my month, birthday month. And here's some things we're going to come up with. Volunteer for 70 minutes. Make a $70 donation to a charity. Reach out to seven friends because none of us have 70. <laughs> Wait, if you <laughs> just count them after you get in office, no. Attend any number of many events, classes, and programs the city offers. We're going to come out with more for that, but I told Mayor Price, that's a brilliant idea to try to get people engaged. Will everybody do it? No. But folks, if a few of them make, make a $70 donation to a charity of your choice, what a difference you can make. If you would donate 70 minutes of your time to do something, just 70 minutes, what a difference you can make. I've got just a few other things to remind you of. The 2020 begins a census count. Responding to it is extremely important. The House of Representatives will not grow. It stays the same number, but they move them around based on population. Texas should gain seats. We will definitely gain seats, but we need an accurate count to get it right. We'll be taking seats away from other states. Now the Senate stays the same. Two senators represent every state, but the, the 400 and some odd House of Representatives, that number is set, but is proportioned by population. So we will gain more seats. We have to get an accurate count. So please, you can do it a number of ways this year. You can even do it online. You can make a call. My next mayor's community table, and many of you have been to my mayor's community table, will be April 30th, right here at this center. No program, although I do open it up for a few questions at the end. It's just for people from different backgrounds 
to sit, break bread together, get to know each other, try to break down barriers. That's going to be April 30th. And then I'm hosting my first ever town hall meeting, October 27th. It's, I've run town hall meetings when I was a council member and a single member, but I've never had one as mayor. I've realized through social media that people, let's be blunt, they don't trust us. I mean, if you read what's going on in the water bills, they think, oh, we need money this month. Hey, Gabe, can you add 30,000 gallons to, to so-and-so's water bill this month? They, they, they just don't, but then it's not just us, they don't trust big business in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm not gonna have two hours of, I'm gonna open it up for questions. I'll have staff there, and if we can't answer your question for you, we'll find out somebody who can. I've said this to our council, and they believe it, and they have bought into it. If we cannot explain why we do things, and why we voted for something, or why we approved that, or this or that, shame on us. I want y'all to know we're here to help, we're here to serve, and if you have a question about our local government, and why we do things the way we do, I want to get you an answer, and sometimes I'd rather do it face to face than over Facebook chatting because sometimes the comments kind of go crazy. On May 2nd, none of the city council members up for election drew an opponent. That means council member Copeland was up for election, council member Clemson was up for election, and council member Mike Delboski, none of them drew an opponent. Congratulations. <laughs> I think that says something about all of us. But because, and as a matter of fact, the school board has no opposition. They will not have an election. And while I'm there, Brian, Parr, please stand. You're, you will be the new, the new school board member come May sometime, so congratulations. <laughs> I've gotten to know Brian, been to some meetings with him, he's on our park board. You'll do great, Brian. On May 2nd, since we don't have any local elections, we're worried about the local voter turnout. Because one of the things we'll be presenting to you is the revote on the one quarter cent crime control district sales tax. It's about to expire and go off. So we're asking you to reapprove it for another 20 years. What we used that quarter cent sales tax for was to pay off the debt for the police fire building, but also about half of it was used to fund police and fire, not fire, police only, police, <coughs> equipment, staff, and it goes away, and so we're asking you to reapprove it so it will continue. It helps us fund it so it doesn't hit, hit the general fund, and if it doesn't pass that eight, that about four or five million dollars a year that we're using to fund police out of will come to the general fund and we'll have to make some changes, some tough decisions. So we're hoping, you, once you know the facts, that you'll get out and support that. That will come up in May. Now, city finance can be a pretty complex subject, but we think you get great value for your tax dollar in Grand Prairie. Everybody, I get asked sometimes, well, my bill is this. Yeah, but we're only a little bitty portion of it. The school's most of it. <laughs> but it's true. The county's less than us than us and than y'all. I've come up with a clever way to be more than one place at once. So let's watch this little video. Grand Prairie is all about friendly people, fun places, and affordable to affluent housing. Every day we deliver great value and quality of life for your tax dollars. And nationwide, plenty have noticed how this value translates into living life grand. Best place in America to retire. Second happiest city in Texas. Fifth best city for first time home buyers in Texas. And the seventh safest large city in Texas. We love accolades, but it gets even better when you realize the value you get for your property tax dollars. So let's take a look at that. 
you get 24-7 police protection, which costs about $550,000 a year for officers and equipment for each patrol car. 24-7 fire protection with 10 fire stations, each costs nearly $2 million a year for firefighters and equipment. 24-7 ambulance service, a new ambulance costs more than $300,000 and nearly $500,000 a year to operate with paramedics. New and well-maintained streets and sidewalks, along with nearly 200 traffic signals, 17,000 street signs, and 700 street lights. A safe and strong digital backbone for city services. An economic growth strategy to attract and keep business that includes planning and management of development, permits and inspections to keep you safe, as well as code compliance to uphold property values. A two-time best in the nation parks and recreation system. An award-winning, engaging and innovative library system. A city government that is open, transparent and accessible. If all we had were your property taxes to pay for city services, we could only afford police service and half of the fire service. That's because your property tax is about 50% of the city's general fund, which pays for day-to-day -day operations. Sales tax pays for 23%, and other fees and service charges pay for the remaining 27%. So you see, you are getting many more city services than you are paying for with just the city's portion of your property tax bill. And your property tax bill includes more than just city taxes. In fact, the city of Grand Prairie makes up 23% of your tax bill. 55% is for the school district, and the remaining 22% is for the county. Based on an average Grand Prairie home value of $167,000, that includes a homestead exemption, the city's portion of your property tax bill is only $94 a month. These days, most households pay more than that for cable TV or internet. One more thing, if you are age 65 or older and claim the senior homestead exemption, that lowers your tax bill by about $25 a month, and it freezes your home's value for your lifetime. Now here's a breakdown of how the city spends its portion of your monthly property tax payment to make your life easier, safer, healthier, and more enjoyable. $44 for police, fire, and ambulance protection. $4 for streets, signals, and sign maintenance. $4 for parks, art, and recreation. $3 to plan, develop, and inspect new growth. $2.50 for animal and environmental health and enforcement. $1.50 for library access to education and information. $35 for capital improvement projects and debt, including new street improvements and other infrastructure. In Grand Prairie, the City Council and City Management Team are dedicated to creating a high quality of life by giving you the most value for your dollar. By bringing you the highest possible return on the investments you've made in your home or property. By creating an attractive place where people will want to live, work, and play. Listen, the bottom line is we truly want to give you value for your dollar as you live life grand here in Grand Prairie. So if I can't make your next mini meeting, my mini me will. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's so crazy. <laughs> oh, don't cry, Jennifer. <laughs> He's a dad. That's not my dad. <laughs> you know what's neat? My favorite on-time video of all time is me walking through the grass to kick off playground the epic years ago when I did. The same guy that videoed me doing that came up with this. I mean, I just love working with that fella. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the voiceover, and he said, Mayor, there's nobody looking, but look, it does change how you talk. Just smile when you're saying that, you know? So I had to repeat it, and you could kind of hear the, the funness in my voice after, after it. You didn't hear it before, but you could hear it afterward. <laughs> Not only do you get a great value for your dollar, I'd say Grand Prairie's quality of life rivals any city in Texas. We have housing from affordable to affluent. We are safer from crime than ever. We have the highest possible levels of fire and EMS protection. And we're adding the retail and restaurants we've lacked. 
We have the best parks in the nation. We offer a wide variety of family-friendly fun and have more amenities than most. Folks, we're the best, and you make it so. Thank you all for being here tonight.